ultimately we we exist to help you meet your customer needs and help solve your business problems. And so uh, any questions that we can answer today in the session, we wanna be able to do that. Um, anything that we can answer uh, that's maybe outside of today's session where you have other questions about the Microsoft ecosystem and wanna know how that can help your business and help drive your customers um, is something we also wanna answer. Um, we we have done this long enough and and have the best people that we've want. I'll, I'll let her throw that those next couple of slides up, but uh, we have uh, some accolades in behind the things that we've done. Um, and it's always good to be recognized for the work that we do on behalf of our customers. So it's it's very exciting when Microsoft or, or other uh, groups are able to recognize that work. And um, I think the final slide that I always like to put up, and I like to show this when I'm first introducing Journey Team, I think gives a good breadth and depth to the areas that we specialize in. Uh, we, we really have experts in lots of different areas of the technologies that your employees and your customers use every day. And our goal is to really make it easier uh, for your, your folks to deliver and do the things that they need to do to help drive your business, improve efficiency, and uh, again, help, help drive revenue and efficiency uh, within the organization. So uh, with that, I will let Deb uh, kind of focus on all the do's and don'ts in the uh, the ERP and specifically year-end process. Uh, I've worked with Deb on a couple projects and I always enjoy hearing her speak. So again, please throw questions in the chat. Uh, feel free to uh, ask away. We'll definitely get to those towards the end of the session. And then uh, if, you, uh, if you do need anything from a technical standpoint, we've got our support email if you're having connection issues, anything like that. And otherwise, thanks so much, Deb. Okay. Well, to start out, um, it's going to be myself and, and Donna Lacerda that are going to be doing this presentation today. Um, our presentation is on the best practices for year-end close and making sure that you have a successful year-end close with uh, the least amount of stress as possible. Um, just to give you a little background upon myself, um, I have been a, um, a owner of my own business for about 20 years. Uh, prior to that, I did a lot of other consulting uh, before coming on board with Journey Team. And I uh, love working with Journey Team. It's a great group of people. We do a lot of collaboration together. And um, it's it's been fantastic. But I have done uh, both manufacturing and financial. I was a, a, a corporate controller and a, a director of IT. So I did a lot of implementations, uh, anywhere from small QuickBooks to um, uh, SAP massive projects, 23 plants worldwide. So I've got a, a lot of experience working in different um, venues and and uh, working with a lot of different customers and a lot of different types of businesses. So um, I'm going to turn this over to Donna. And Donna, can you share a little bit about yourself? Hi, my name is Donna Lacerda. I am actually based on the East Coast, um, the Boston area. I have been um, doing ERP consulting for about 23 years. Um, started with a DOS-based program called Real World um, and then moved on to uh, Great Plains and uh, what's Dynamics GP and have been working with Business Central for about four years now. Okay, thanks Donna. All right, um, year-end close. Are you busy? Has have people come and asked you that quite frequently? I'm willing to bet they have. Um, it's always a hectic time of the year and it's a little bit crazy for accounting people, especially. So um, I, I feel your pain. I've been in that situation. So has Donna. So we uh, know what you're going through there. Um, today, uh, we're going to talk about how we can prepare for your year end close. Um, how to perform that year-end close, finalizing the year-end close, so make sure we have everything that we needed to have done, and then post those activities, obviously. And then we're also going to share commonly made mistakes that a lot of um, that we find that happens with a lot of customers, and they'll call us and say, "Hey, how do I do this? Um, we've got, or this is what happened to me," and so we'll 
be able to hopefully stop some of those mistakes from happening in this presentation. All right, if I can get this to work, and I don't know if I can. Probably you're not feeling that way, <laughs> but um, it it is a great time of the year to start prepping up and doing things um, to get ready for your year end close. And now is the start of that. So as the holidays approach, we start thinking about those types of things. And uh, what Donna and I have presented here is going to be a checklist of the step by step processes you, you need to do. So um, this is geared towards Microsoft Business Central. Um, and uh, using that product line. However, obviously a lot of the same steps have to happen in any software that you have. Let's see if I can get this to go. Okay, um, so to start out your year end closing, preparing for the year end is, is the most important thing. Um, uh, the actual close itself is pretty straightforward, but prepping for it seems to take the most amount of time. So first off, you want to make sure that you have um, posted all of your journal entries, your payments, your deposits, cash receipts and payroll, anything else, any other processes that you might need to do on a regular year to date basis, you're going to want to process those as well. Um, you may have to add to our list here, but these are the, at least the major ones that we see. Um, you're also going to want to post your recurring entries to make sure that everything gets um, processed for the year. Um, your inventory reconciliation, not only is it a part of just reconciling your inventory, but you want to make sure that you do some prep work ahead of time on that. Um, meaning you get your teams together of who's going to be doing the first counts, who's going to be doing the second counts, and so on, if you're doing a physical year, uh, physical inventory at your year end. Now, some businesses will do cycle counting, and uh, that's actually my preferred method is to do cycle counting. So you're only counting a few parts a day or a few parts a week rather than having to do all of your parts all at once, usually at the end of the year, usually when your employees want to be out of the building and, and enjoying the holidays and stuff. So it's it's important to make sure that um, you plan ahead of time so everybody knows their role, everybody knows what they need to do, and you can um, process your inventory um, as efficiently as you possibly can. Again, if you have to do it on a phys uh, fiscal year um, and the fiscal year end close, then make sure that you plan ahead for that. It's um, it's a important aspect. Um, the other piece of it is to do your inventory revaluations. That's the time when you might want to do some corrections. Um, take a look at your costing, your revaluing your inventory as a part of the year end process to make sure you have the most current um, costs. Uh, you will do a few of these steps. And again, like we said, um, we're offering you this checklist, so to speak. So some of these things may not apply to you. Some of these things may. Um, just take a look at them. And if if they apply, make sure that you process them. So we're talking about running the adjusted cost routine and posting it. We're talking about running the inventory reconciliation and uh, the by the inventory posting groups to make sure those are processed. Uh, tie up your received not invoiced, your accrued liability account. Um, tie up your uh, shipped not invoiced and compare that to your general ledger to make sure that that's correct. And then tie your net inventory interim posted to your inventory interim account. And tie your inventory posted to the general ledger. Um, the next piece of it is make sure that your accounts receivable is reconciling and it's tying to your general ledger. So run your a a ARH um, aging report and compare that to the GL. If you balance, great. If not, we need to figure out what's going on and get that corrected. Um, your accounts payable will also need to be reconciled the same way as the receivables 
just run your aging report and check to make sure that it ties to the general ledger balance that you have. Um, your fixed assets, you're going to want to make sure that you calculate and depreciate all of your um, fixed assets and post those. And then you, on your manufacturing, you want to uh, be able to complete any and all finished um, production orders and reconcile the WIP balances. Make sure that everything is correct there. Um, the bank accounts, you're also going to be reconciling the bank accounts using the bank rec module. Um, compare that with your general ledger. Make sure that everything ties out. These are all sub ledgers um, that you want to make sure are um, tying properly to your general ledger. And then the last one is the multi currency. Enter that currency conversion rates that you're going to use for your gains and losses if multi currency is applicable to your business. And then run the gain loss conversion routine um, to make sure that those get processed. Don't forget, um, this is a really important one. A lot of people um, forget about this and or they don't put a lot of emphasis on it. If you don't lock out posting for the year, um, it, it's possible that somebody can come in and still make a journal entry or a, a transaction in the system. So you do want to go into the general ledger setup and make sure that you change the posting dates to be only the posting dates you want the employees to be able to process in. Um, usually it would be the new fiscal year at this point. Um, you can also choose to select certain individuals that will have access to be able to continue to do the transactions. Because obviously when you do a year end close, you're going to have a general journal that you're going to have to process at the end. Um, and you're gonna wanna make sure that you can still post that but you probably don't want the rest of your group to be in the financials at this point. Okay. Um, so year end closing. Now we get to the fun stuff here. Um, we create new inventory periods consistent with our fiscal period. So we wanna make sure that the ending date of every inventory period is also consistent with the ending period of every fiscal period. Um, before you um, close your inventory periods, you want to run the adjust, adjusted costs, just that we had mentioned earlier. You're going to also want to run your inventory period test report. Make sure that everything looks good there. Run that post inventory to GL test action um, so we can make sure that everything got posted properly. Run posted inventory costs to the general ledger batch. Hey, Dad. Post, yes. Sorry, on the display settings, so the top left, just click that little drop down and press uh, switch to presenter mode. You see that display settings? Um, yep. And then swap presenter view and slideshow. Ah. Awesome. Thanks. Is Carrie. that better? Sorry. I went through a large part of that without having that correct. I, I can't see what you guys can see <laughs> at this point. So sorry about that. Um, okay. And then. Um, you also want to make sure that you posted all your inventory, selected your inventory periods that you want to close and go ahead and close those. Um, after the inventory period has been closed, you can't post inventory changes before uh, that particular ending date. So that's why you wanna make sure that you're um, connecting with your fiscal periods and everything is tied properly, okay? Um, reopen your inventory periods if necessary. Um, once you've completed making and adjusting the entries, remember to close the inventory periods again, though, um, so that you don't have somebody coming in and, and making transactions uh, when you don't want them to be in that. Okay. All right. And then um, for the year end close process, we also want to verify the upcoming fiscal year calendar and make sure that we have the accounting periods that we want set up in the system and ready to go. Um, if it's not there and it's not, or the dates are not correct, it, now it's the time to correct those before you do any processing of future transactions. So uh, double check on those. And then to close the fiscal year is pretty simplified. Um, you're gonna go into the accounting periods, you're gonna go to process, and you're going to go 
to close year. When you select the close year, you're going to get a pop-up message at the bottom that basically tells you that you're you're about to close this accounting period from 1-1-2020 to 12-31-2020 um, in this particular example. And then if that's the correct year that you're trying to close, then you'll go ahead and select yes. Okay, uh, once you've closed your accounting periods, then you need to close your income statement. So it's a two part process in Business Central. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're doing both of those pieces as a part of your year end close. That way everything rolls to the retained earnings and you're good to go for the next year. So you're in order to do that, you're gonna navigate to your chart of accounts, go to process and close the income statement. And once you've done that, the page will auto-populate with the next fiscal year to be closed based on that accounting periods. You'll see them all checked at that point in time. You can go back and reclose the income statement that has already been closed if you have additional entries like auditors or accountants might make a um, correcting entry or a adjusting entry that they wanna put at the end of the year for you. You can do that and then close the, um, income statement again. Okay, uh, this is what the menu is going to look like when you go to do a close. You'll see the close income statement options. The first thing it's going to ask you is what year you're going to close. It will also ask you for a general journal template. Um, you can use a general journal. You can use for the batch, you could use default or you can create your own separate one if you want a different one. Um, the doc, you do, will need to have a document number um, set up in there. Uh, retained earnings, you'll need to double check to make sure that your retained earnings are correct. And then you can post to retained earnings in by balance or by detail. My recommendation is that you do it by balance. Otherwise, in your retained earnings account, you're going to see each and every account that gets posted when you go to do that process. So it, it can be, the retained earnings can grow rather exponentially when you do that. Um, you may just want to do it in the bounce format. Um, and then your posting description can be whatever description you'd like it to be. Um, that is entirely up to you. You will, if you're using dimensions, and I believe that most of our customers use dimensions, you are going to want to close by dimension so that you can make sure that everything is properly located in, in, in the place it should be. So this will um, ensure that the reporting for all of those types of transactions are going to go to the correct place. Okay. All right. Um, the system will then go through and sum up and close by dimensions and create a journal entry for you. That journal entry, then you're going to need to go in and post. Um, it's going to tell it, you'll get a pop up message to know that you were successful at closing the year because it'll tell you that journal lines have successfully been created. Um, go ahead and review that journal, general journal, and make sure that everything looks proper. It's what your expectations were. The posting dates um, will have a C in front of it to make sure that it's designated as a closing entry. And then you'll go over and post that journal. And your year end is complete at this point. Um, so in the presentation, um, we talked about locking out. I'm doing this in um, the Business Central. Um, to lock out your periods, you're going to go to the general ledger setup. Allow posting from and allow posting to. So where you're at the end of um, 2022, you only want people to post to um, your year of um, say 2023. You can do this by month. You would then need to remember to come in here. Um, at the end of every month to change your posting to go to the next month. Some people just do it for the entire year. In this, I'm going to go ahead and say nobody can post. People can only post for my fiscal calendar year, whichever, um, for the 1-1-2023 to December 2023. 
However, um, I'm logged in as Hank and I still need to process the year end. I can come under the general, go to the user setup. I can select Hank and I can say Hank can post anything from 01 2020. I'm not going to put in an, an ending date so that Hank could do anything back to the, um, the um, year of January 2020. I'm going to back out. I'm going to back out of here. We're going to go to our global search and we're going to do accounting periods. And this is where you're going to come in and you're going to create your year and you're going to close your year. All of um, I have closed all the way through 2021. I'm um, 2020, sorry. I'm now going to close my year 2021. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to say close. It's going to say this function will close um, my entire year for 2021. And do you want to do that? Once you've done this, you cannot reopen these years. I'm going to say yes. And now it has made a mark in the closed that that year has been closed and locked. Once you've done that, you also want to, if you're using inventory and inventory periods, you want to make sure that you come into the, the inventory periods and you want to make sure that you close your inventory periods. This should be done on a monthly basis. Um, and so when you're completed with um, one month, you would come up and you would close your period. You can run test reports. You can run a um, post inventory to GL test report before actually posting to the GL. If you need to, you can also reopen your inventory periods to make any adjustments that not, might need to be made. Once you've done both of those processes, um, you want to create your new year. I'm going to click on the create year. This is going to start with my new year. I'm doing 12 months and uh, 12 periods, each being one month. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to scroll down and now I have my new year set up as well. The inventory periods to set up a new year does not have that functionality yet. We're hoping that that will come eventually. You would actually need to come in here and actually type in your um, inventory periods. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but. Um, so once you've done all of this, the next step is to close your um, income statement. So you're going to come up back up to the um, global and you're going to type in close and we're going to do close income statement. This is going to roll all of your P&L accounts um, into your retained earnings. The year that I'm closing is 2021. I'm going to select my batch. I'm going to just use my general. I'm going to um, my template rather, sorry, and then my batch. I'm just going to use my default. You can set up additional um, templates and or batches if you wanted to uh, separate them from um, your regular batches. You're going to give it a document number. In this case, I'm just going to do um, G. Just do that. Make sure that you are closing to your retained earnings account. As Deb said, you can post either balance or detail. Um, your posting description, close income statement. If you wanted, you could actually come in here and just put in the year. If you wanted, you do not have to. You can leave it at close income statement. The next thing that we're going to do is the dimensions. So we're going to come in here and we're going to select all of our, our dimensions so that when the close happens, that it will distribute um, the proper dollar amounts to the proper dimension value. Um, once this is all done, you're going to say OK. 
it says the journal lines have been successfully created. We say OK. We're going to come up to finance, general journals, into our general batch, and then our default batch. Deb, where did it go? It did not go there. Hang on a second. You should see your journals. It did close. We may not have had anything in that term. Oh, it did, right. There might not have been anything in that year. It's a demo database. Um, yeah, <laughs> it is a demo database. I apologize. Um, so normally what you would see is in here, you would see all of your journal entries. I apologize. Um, you would want to verify and just verify your uh, dimensions, which would be on here at the end. Verify that all of those look correct, that you're in balance. And once you're done with that, you can come up to the uh, post imprint. You can do a preview. You could do a test. If everything looks good, then you would just post. Um, so the end is near on our year end close. We're almost finished. So hang in there. Um, don't forget. These are a few more things you need to do at the end. Um, pretty basic things. You want to run your balance sheet, your income statement. You want to run your trial balance report and verify the balances, make sure everything looks good. Uh, run any statement of cash flows if you're going to use those. Um, you want to process those as well. Um, then the next steps are to create your budget for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, following your organization's business rules. But now's a great time to set that up and get it all ready to go. Um, in addition to that, um, towards the end of January, if you're in the United States, you're going to need to process your 1099s if, if that's applicable in your business, and you can do that as well. Um, some of the common mistakes that we see, these are things that we would typically find customers calling and saying, hey, I forgot to do this, now what do I do? So we're gonna give you those common mistakes, so hopefully that you won't make those. Um, the fiscal, uh, one of the first ones is that the fiscal period year end dates are not the same as the inventory end dates. So you're posting in a different, um, potentially in a different period with your inventory than you would with your actual close. That can cause a mismatch in your transactions. So you wanna make sure um, that you have synced those up so that your fiscal periods are, uh, have the same end dates as your inventory. You also want to make sure that you don't forget to lock out the users um, when, they're, when you're done with the close so that Nobody can make a transaction by mistake because it's it's quite possible people get used to um, typing in 2022 and they might not be ready to type in 2023 yet. You don't want them to go back and type and put in something for 2022. Um, and then the last one is um, don't forget to set up the new year. And um, like Donna had showed you, we want to make sure that you get your new year ready to go. Otherwise, when the employees go to post something, they're they're going to run into problems that way. Deb? Yes. I actually um, did a different year. I can show the journal entry if you'd like. OK. OK, so this is um, the general journal entry for the closing. I had to close 2020. Um, there was no data in 2021, so I apologize. But I just wanted you to see um, your posting date will have the C for the close. You'll also have a description um, for um, the closing, and I did use my year for 2020. Um, and then over here are my dimensions. If one did not get posted correctly, you can do a dimension correction. Or you could come in here and you could select it, um, any one of the um, dimensions, so that it would post at that point correctly. And I was just going to show you. So it's going to show you the preview posting, and it's going to show you your journal entries. If everything looks good and we are in balance, um, you can go ahead and 
post. And that's it. Just wanted to show that just so you could see what it looked like. Sorry um, that it didn't work the first time. Okay, okay thanks, Deb. Donna. Yep, back to you. All right. Um, Journey team has uh, several um, financial experts, um, quite a few of us, and uh, we are here to assist you at your year for your year end close. So if you need any help, feel free to reach out to us. We are happy to help you with that. Um, we know it's a once a year task. Um, oftentimes there's turnover in an organization or you just don't remember all the steps that you need to take. You can certainly use this PowerPoint presentation, um, but if you need, if you want to make sure that everything is running smoothly and you want some help doing that, Journey Team is here to help you. Uh, we have an offering that we are going to um, put out there for you if you guys are interested. Um, we will help you close your accounting periods. We'll help you build your year-end journal entries. Um, we'll um, also do an overall evaluation of your financial reports to make sure that those are um, the way that you want them. And if you're interested, um, please let us know.